obviously we've been hearing some signs of more policy support on its way. What do you think is really going to be in the pipeline? Is it enough to really stem the, the weakness in this economy now? Yeah, hey, Yvonne, great to be back. Uh, uh, the answer, short answer from us is at this stage, uh, no, it's not enough. It, it continues to come in in drips and drabs. And, uh, you know, the, the problems China have now are deep-seated structural ones, as you just heard from Christie on the property market. Uh, but, you know, very high debt levels, high youth unemployment, uh, deflation, and uh, really shattered confidence right now. It, it's not clear to us that these piecemeal policy measures are really enough to uh, revive the economy. So we remain uh, cautious. Right. Rob, it's, I mean, amidst the, all the gloom and doom out there, and understandably so, because things haven't gone well, are, are we sleeping on any potential bright spots in, in, in this economy that perhaps might recover quicker and or sooner? You know, I, I'd say, David, uh, that the mobility from uh, after the reopening was there and there were parts of um, uh, services uh, such as eating out that were doing well and, and, and domestic tourism. And um, obviously some of the... Uh, uh, renewable sides such as EVs have been doing well but really it's just not enough. Uh, the property market is just so huge uh, including all the indirect effects it can account for you know as much as 20 percent of GDP and that is extremely weak. The PMI data that that just came out you know I find it interesting that there's not much enough attention on the non-manufacturing uh, that makes up around 60% of the economy. It, it's more than the manufacturing, mm. and that has continued to fall. It went down further to 51. That's a sign that all these problems in, in manufacturing, uh, sorry, in, uh, in the property market are starting to filter out more into the broader economy, hitting confidence. Yeah, Rob, I mean, to your point here, I mean, this is why we've got the uh, Bureau of Statistics now going to be including the, the retail service data with the overall numbers, and they say that's gone up, what, 20% since uh, a year ago, thereabouts. So there is a bright spot. So, you know, with you look at everywhere else where there's doom and gloom, there are, well, at least one here. So is there ex excessive pessimism being priced in? And, you know, that goes to the point of when foreigners get it wrong when they're investing in that market, historically speaking, when they move out, we see actually big gains or reasonable gains for the Hang Seng ultimately here as well. So I think, Rich, that has been the bright spot, uh, parts of um, the services as we discussed. But uh, my concern is without uh, a much bigger policy response, whether it's massive uh, fiscal spending or, or a QE-type program like we've seen in the US and Europe when things get really bad, you know, the risk is we're going to start to see those services sectors that have been doing well uh, are starting to weaken as well. So uh, I, I remain quite cautious unless we get a big policy response to deal with uh, what is really a big structural problem. And you know what? One other thing I'd say, one sector that we are getting more worried about is the banks. It's looking increasingly like they're being used as a policy arm here, whether it's uh, to cut their lending rates, whether it's possibly to actually take on some of the bad debt uh, in a swap. Uh, that, that's going to really affect their profitability and that can affect the economy as well. So, you know, there is no free lunch here uh, in, in, tr in trying to do these piecemeal mm. measures. I think ultimately you need a much more forceful uh, response.